still can't. Well, here you can't go in a restaurant, but I was up in Winnesco, and they've got indoor dining open yeah. up there. So. Oh, my gosh. I don't know about Big Bear yet. I don't know if indoor dining is open there or not. I think they're going up again at, at Thanksgiving. Oh, because so. they can hear us. Turn it off. Thank you.
Good morning, everybody. Feel free to stand or sit anywhere you'd like to worship.
Welcome everyone, glad to be here today. It's a little bit warmer inside than it is out and the, the wind is not in our favor today, but uh, we gather to uh, remind ourselves of True North, where our center of gravity is uh, to get through the, uh, the week, to heal our hearts perhaps. And uh, the Bible says that some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. So whatever happens out there, we know what's really going on in, uh, in God's world. So let us uh, prepare our hearts for today. we we'll receive uh, Holy Communion today. And uh, we're reminded that God has called us to be his special people. The Holy One calls us to be holy ones. And in doing so, we're reminded that we are uh, sometimes broken vessels, that uh, all of us have uh, our humanness to deal with. And so uh, we ask God to help us with that. So Holy One, we confess that we are not awake enough for you. We're not faithful enough in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We fail to see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin and that divides your beloved people. We ask you to open our hearts to your coming, open our eyes to see you in one another, especially in our neighbors, and open our hands to serve your creation all the days of our life. Let us pray. God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. We'll have the reading of the Holy Gospel. everyone. The Holy Gospel uh, today is according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus tells a parable about his own second coming, emphasizing the need for readiness at all times. Jesus said to the disciples, then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids uh, came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Grace, peace, and mercy from God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So global pandemic stalled economy, racial pain, city violence, canceled travel plans, a polarized national election. Are we having fun yet? Maybe feel like the world's spinning out of control. 
like we're going back to the Dark Ages. But none of this is new. The early Christians had to endure 14 years of rule by a crazy, insane, persecuting emperor called Nero, who seemed like he was out to get the Christians however he could. And so they lived outside with no heat, no building, no protection from their rulers. But they survived. And not only did they survive, they thrived. In fact, the church probably never grew as fast as it did under the time of that persecution. They spent their lives ministering the gospel to the world in acts of love, following Jesus, expecting his return. And so maybe we can learn something from their confidence. Imagine you're on a supply ship, returning provisions from a penal colony in the rocky island of Patmos. And one of your officers brings this parchment, this notebook discovered on the lower level. And you open it, you see it's from one of the passengers. His name was John. And he claims to bring words from Jesus Christ, the ruler of the kings on earth. Jesus Christ, the ruler of the kings on earth. Can you imagine that? Quite a statement. He claims that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. The disciples saw this Jesus, this friend of theirs, be put to death. But they also saw him rise and be present in their lives. When the early church declared Jesus is Lord, they were saying something, something new, because he was the king of the kings, the firstborn of the dead. He had the keys of death and Hades. So for us, what does it mean? Well, certainly it means that we are not in control, but it also means that the world is not out of control. All power has been given to him. And this is an unnerving message for any who claim that they are in control. It frees us not to be in bondage to someone who is not in control. Peter says, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. And no rulers and no powers or anything else can separate us from the love of God. That personal confidence expanded to include the realization that the world, this world, is not out of Jesus' control. The second thing is, we don't live here, we love here. This is just a brief stay that we have here. The early Christians recognized that. They experienced themselves as a chosen race, a piece of God's possession, but they knew this was for a short time. We're called here to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to be lovers of God, to be imitators of Christ. And so we don't live here. We love here. We're not in control. The world is not out of control either. It's not out of Christ's control. We're not supposed to feel at home here. But we are supposed to love here with a heart waiting for our king. So finally, in the confusion, the complexity, the uncertainty of our days, remember that we are human, we are not God. And God is in control. Maybe King David has it 
spelled out for us the easiest and the simplest in Psalms 27.4. King David says this, one thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after. What is that one thing? That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That one thing, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Paul says it another way, he says, for me to live as Christ, to die as gain. We reoriented ourselves to the true living king, the fact that Jesus is control of our lives, the fact that nothing can separate us truly at all from the love of God he has for us. All right, brothers, I don't consider I have made it on my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to li what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In a world where there are sirens on every side and fires and smoke, Paul drowns it all out with the upward call of Christ Jesus. One thing I do, forget what lies behind, strain forward, lean into it, what lies ahead. Because we worship not a king, we worship the king of kings and Lord of lords. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. I ask you, brothers and sisters, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? If answer, so answer, we do. We do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and was buried, descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. If so, answer, we do. We do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? If so, answer, we do. We'll now have the prayers. Please join me in prayer. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends and who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Be with all who need your healing hand, especially Sabrina, former Bishop Dean Nelson and his family in the tragic loss of his wife, Marianne. Floyd Lawson, Shane Erkins, Kristen, 
Susan, Rolando, Colleen and Alan, Rolando, Carl, Michael, Kathy, Adam, Garrett B, George L, John George, Paul H, Robbie, Pam H, Mike T, Ruben K, George H, and Donna K. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For the fellowship gathered in this place, for the spiritual gifts of each of our members, for those celebrating significant events in their lives, especially Patty Severa, that the Holy Spirit guide us in our work and our journeys. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and you can take this opportunity, if you'd like, to pass your waves of peace to everybody who's here. <laughs> Good to be with you all. Great, thank you, Julie. There's an offering basket on the way in or way out, depending on which way you're coming in the center aisle anyway. So that's uh, reserved for you. Um, we receive our tithes and offerings and uh, special gifts. We remember all our friends, remember the widows, the poor, our, our folks, our friends in uh, Inglewood, uh, Operation Christmas Child coming up, our friends in El Salvador, and uh, all the poor and all the needy. So gracious God of all goodness, generations have turned to you gathered around your table and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them as we gather these gifts from your abundance, give thanks for your rich blessings. We may feast upon your very self and care for all you have done and made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. There's individual uh, communion um, kits. If you haven't received one, maybe uh, raise your hand or if they're in the back, um, we can help you out those. There's grape juice or wine either way. So let's prepare our hearts for the Holy Communion. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Give him our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who sharing our life lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to your own brilliant light. So with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, with the hosts of heaven, we praise your name, join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. Believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So now we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place. Unite them with the ceaseless petition of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now with Christians all across the world, let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us partake of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and general hearts, generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. We have time for some announcements. Julie? Okay, I think you probably all have these in your bulletin, but I'll highlight a few. Um, this is actually our Family Promise Host Week, which is a little bit sad because they would be coming tonight to our church and spending the night here if it was non-COVID times, but you probably know that we have three families now and they're all staying over in Torrance at First Christian Church, but our uh, church has donated money for grocery gift cards and gas cards, which you can continue to donate either through our church or through Family Promise, but please pray for those three families. Uh, just think about them a little bit extra maybe this week. It's a mom and a dad and then two single moms and nine children. One mom has six kids. So thank you for, for your support as always for Family Promise. Um, the Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes are actually due no later than this Friday the 13th. Uh, we, act, we have some little wooden cars that were donated by someone down in the workroom. So if you're still going to make a basket, basket and need a little um, toy, you can go and pick one of these up. And I didn't realize that you can actually go online and build a shoebox. I'm sure you send money and they build it for you, but that's, it's funny how with COVID they're coming up with all kinds of options for uh, alternatives for things. Um, thirdly, as you, you all know, we adopt families through Love Inc. Uh, over the holidays for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, and once again, you can just send gift cards this year if people don't want to deliver in person. Probably most people won't. So you can contact Angie Rosen if you, um, if you still would like to adopt a family. And um, as Pastor mentioned, First Lutheran Inglewood has been our sister church for many, many years. And um, one of the things we do there is adopt some of their low-income children over the holidays. So I have the list of all the names, and they literally range in age from infant to 17 years old, boys and girls. So you can call me if you'd like to um, buy a, get a gift and bring it to church, and I'll do the delivery. So that's that, and lastly, there will be no noon prayers this week. Um, I've, I've actually missed them for quite a while with Pastor Ken. And also, for those of you who don't know, Ken and Barbie's son Tyler will be married tomorrow night. And so we wish God's blessing on this couple and on their families. Thank you. Great, thank you, Julie. I haven't even thought about that wedding yet. I'm so <laughs> yeah, I better think about it pretty soon. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, glad to see you here, everybody. Uh, don't let your hearts be troubled. Um, keep your eyes on Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his perfect peace. As we join together, how awesome is this place? Another, this is none other than the house of God, and this, my friends, is the gate of heaven. Beloved of God, go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Amen. We have one more closing hymn here. There is a day all creation's waiting for Come to meet His word 
Amen. Be dismissed. <laughs>